Hello everybody and welcome back to another RevWise video. Today we're going to be going through some of the most difficult IGCSE biology questions in history. These are questions which students consistently perform the worst on, which is why we're going to be going through them today, going through two questions and basically giving tips and tricks on how to answer them. So let's go right into it. Describe the stages by which a bacterium can be genetically modified to produce large amounts of a named human protein. Now before you even think about answering this, identify where you get the point marks in this question. Clear we need to describe the stages, right? That's pretty obvious. But if you went too quickly, you might not have seen this, a named human protein. This is basically the basis of our entire entire question, right? The, our entire answer should be based upon a named human protein. So what human protein are we going to use? Well, if you have been doing your revision, you should know the protein that's associated with this process, which is insulin. Production of insulin is basically what this process is, how we learn it. So it's a very good idea to use insulin. So we're going to be writing about insulin, but we still need to know the entire process. And that's just by our theory. So I'm going to be going through it in a very concise way, very simple way. Hopefully you understand it. And I'm going to be using numbered steps in order to, for you to get a understanding on basically the storyline, the, the chronological order of in which these steps occur. So let's go with number one. Number one, we have to identify the target gene right target gene for insulin that's how we show that we're using a named human protein right we're using a target gene for insulin so after we've identified it what we do is we need to cut it out right we need to cut it out of the length of dna the specific region that codes for the insulin protein so how do we cut it out well we use restriction enzymes to cut out insulin G. If you want to be specific, it's a restriction endonuclease enzyme, but restriction enzyme will do. So we're using these restriction enzymes as scissors, right? We're just cutting out that insulin gene from the DNA, from the human DNA. Now, after we've done this, we have to use a certain bacterial organelle called a plasmid. Now, a plasmid is just a small loop of bacterial DNA. So they are taken out. So plasmid, plasmids are taken out of bacteria. Now, after they've been taken out, what can we do with them? Well, basically, we need to cut a section of them so that we can insert to the insulin gene into it. And the way we cut it is by using the same restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme. We're using the same restriction enzyme to cut the plasmid. And this kind of ensures that we're able to insert that insulin gene into the plasmid. If we use different ones, essentially the ends, or they won't stick together and it just wouldn't work out without getting too technical into it. So it's around this point where you might want to um, have this little piece of knowledge, right? It's a good thing to include into your response because it'll get you a mark and it just shows that you have a good understanding of this process. So a plasmid is acting as a vector, okay? So the plasmid acts as a vector. Now, if you're thinking of maths, you might be confused, but this is a biological vector. So a vector in biology refers to basically an organism that acts as a sort of vehicle, a means to transfer genetic material from a donor organism, which in this case is a human donating the insulin gene, to a target organism, which in this case is a bacterium. And when it's transferred to there, the vector when you're transferring it via the vector, it can be expressed and the proteins are produced in a large scale. So we're kind of wanting to make a large scale production of insulin here, which is why we're making use of the plasmids as a vector. So the plasmids are the vector by which we're transferring the gene from the human to a bacterium. So the final part we need to mention is how we're actually adding the insulin gene into the plasmid. Well, we attach the insulin gene via the ligase enzyme. So you can just think of ligase as glue. It's essentially just sticking it together so that we can have a nice plasmid that has the right gene and that can be used to produce a large amount of the insulin protein. Now after this, the insulin is just mass produced by the bacteria and we have all five marks 
wonderful answer. Very simple, but very tricky if you're not reading the question properly. Now let's go quickly on to the next question. Describe the stages in the production of cloned mammals such as Dolly the sheep. Now this process is simply theory. No application needed, you just need to memorize this. But many people get confused because there's a lot of steps here that you might get mixed up and it leads to a very wrong answer with only one mistake. So you gotta make sure you know all the parts very, very well. So this process of cloning here for Dolly the sheep is actually known as somatic cell nuclear transfer. And that's kind of a hint to how this process is actually going to unfold. But without spoiling it, let's go right into it. So first step, right? The first step is acquiring an egg cell. And this egg cell is gotten from the first person we need to know, which is the surrogate mother. The surrogate mother of Dolly the sheep. So the surrogate mother, surrogate mother is what provides the egg cell. What's special about this egg cell is we're not actually taking this egg cell to and fertilizing it to produce an offspring. That would just be regular fertilization. We're making a clone. So what we do is we actually enucleate the egg cell. And I'm using fancy terminology. Basically what we're doing is removing the nucleus from the egg cell in simple terms. We're just removing the nucleus. But what can we do with that empty husk, right? It's just an egg cell with a no nucleus now. We can't do anything with that. So how do we get a new nucleus there? Well, we have to take a somatic cell, which is essentially an adult body cell from, so sorry, so I'll write um, somatic cell from the desired mother. And essentially this somatic cell is taken by what the you what you want the offspring to be a clone of because the offspring is just going to be a clone of who, whatever sheep the somatic cell is taken from so the somatic cell from the desired from the desired mother let's say desired mother is taken nucleus is removed and i'm sure you can guess where we're going here the nucleus of this cell is added to the egg cell. And now we have this, this fusion here, right? So how does this happen? Because you might think this is makes sense. How can we have a nucleus of one cell into this other egg cell of the surrogate mother? It's confusing and it can't happen naturally. So we need to stimulate this. And the way we stimulate this is via electric shock. So stimulated via an electric shock. So this allows the nucleus to actually be accepted and to actually carry out the processes that a nucleus has to do in the egg cell. So after you put in this nucleus into the surrogate mother's egg cell, what happens is after the electric shock, the start of mitosis will occur. And from this mitosis, An embryo will be formed and this will be implanted in the uterus of the surrogate mother and the surrogate mother will basically be the place in which this this new nucleus develops into a clone of the desired mother who we took the somatic cell nucleus from and it might seem confusing, but I'm sure you, if you just get your head around it, it's quite simple. So after this mitosis, we know mitosis creates no variation, right? So mitosis is occurring, we're just getting more and more cells, and eventually we get Dolly. Don't actually say that in your answer, right? Because it just says such as Dolly the sheep, but essentially you, you're getting a clone. You're getting a clone of, not the surrogate mother, not a clone of the surrogate mother, you're getting a clone of the desired mother, which is, um, the mother that you're taking the som somatic cell nucleus from. Remember that. The surrogate mother is just there um, for the egg cell and for the embryo to be placed in the uterus of. And yeah, that's how you get all five marks there. Uh, pretty simple one, but easy to get confused. And yeah, these are two questions that I thought you guys would really benefit by knowing how to answer. I can do more if you guys enjoy this type of content, and I hope you've learned something from this video. So I'll see you guys for the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you.